Hi guys, it's Debbie with Debbie J's Crafting Corner and happy holidays. Okay, I know it's August. It is not time for Christmas yet, but I've got some more Christmassy um, stamps and dies and glimmer plates to play with. And what's even better is we've got little gnomes. So this is the Gnome for Christmas collection from Spellbinders. We've got this humongous stamp. It's actually two stamps. We've got one stamp that says wishing you all the joy of the holidays. And then we've got this real big sentiment stamp, Merry, Bright, Christmas, Happy, Joyful, Holiday Cheer. So this is a really cool stamp set that would do awesome to be able to knock out some mass produced cards awesomeness we've got a glimmer plate that's got all these pretty um and i don't have any magnets at the moment which is why this isn't on a magnet yet but we've got one that's got all these pretty stars to be able to put basically anywhere on your card then we've got two gnome sets this one looks a little odd, but it creates an ornament that swings. You probably recognize this little circle up at the top of this die. That creates the swinging mechanism. So it's gonna go like this. And we're gonna have our little gnome down at the bottom all sitting on an ornament. So that's gonna be super cute. And then, oh my goodness, I as soon as I saw the words gnome tree i had to get this die so this die it has the background layer to make it so that it's easy for you to assemble everything together and then it's got this one that cuts out all the little bits for you to assemble your gnomes with now you can do it all in one color and just color it in with your markers or you can do some paper piecing which is what i plan on doing and then we've got all these other bits that are perfect for decorating up our little gnome christmas tree so anyway i'm going to get busy die cutting a bunch of things out and we will make us some cards so let's start with the holly jolly gnome set that's the one where our little gnome is going to be sitting on an ornament so we've got these dies this is a circle die with a sentiment that says holly jolly i've already cut everything out for us to be able to assemble one card um, at least the swinging mechanism for it these pieces are for our bow and I cut that out of some red glitter cardstock and some regular red cardstock because our bow does have the little holes which basically is going to make it look like it's got a little bit of dimension and if I layer that up on top of one of the other colors then it's going to give just that little extra little extra oomph then I've got the hat and arms We've got this little piece, which is our topper for our ornament. And then we've got the two little arms. We've got his beard, we've got his shoes, and then we've got the soles of his shoes and his little nose. And then of course we have our little, um, if I turn it the right way, we've got the swinging and mechanism and the string that our ornament's gonna go on. So I'm gonna go ahead and start just gluing all the pieces together. I'm putting everything together I'm realizing that and I'm looking at a picture of the completed one to see exactly how to do it I'm noticing that there is a bit of color here in the image 
And it's like, well, where in the world would that be? So I figured maybe it's for this die. And what I think it's supposed to be is like, this is kind of the mounting piece where you would put your little gnome so that you can attach his feet and have everything like kind of like that, like that. So that's what I'm going to do. It's probably going to be a little bit off, but you know what? Nobody is going to know this but me. Well, and then you guys, but you're not going to tell anyone. So let's just add him on here so we've got a place to adhere some of the other bits. And that does make this piece a little bit more solid too. And then I can attach him to my little thing here. Okay, great. I think that is going to work. Okay, this guy is just adorable. So we've got our little ornament done. Now all we need is to attach it to our bow. So the bow is going to go on here and he's going to be able to swing back and forth. And to do that, I'm going to need a circle, basically a little circle here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put it right here behind my little bow. Let's test that out. <laughs> so, so precious. So now all I need for, to finish up this card is going to be my card base and my background. So I'm going to go ahead and start working on my next set, which is the gnome tree. Well, once I get this focal piece done, then we can start adding it to a couple of cards. So let's get started on putting together our second focal point image for our card using the gnome tree um, die set. So I've cut out all the pieces. I've actually cut out multiples of different things and I'll explain why in just a second. This big piece here cuts the background and I'm going to start putting them back on my magnetic sheet as I go along. For the inside, which is all of our cute little gnomes, that's this one, I cut it out three times because I need white for the beards and then I need some colors for the um, for their clothes, right? And on the back, I went ahead and put some post-it tape so it hold everything together so that hopefully it'll all go in place without a problem. And I probably should have put the post-it tape on the front. Now I'm thinking about that. I need to go back and do that. So don't do what I do, do what I say, right guys? I should have put it on the front because that way I can add adhesive to the back and glue them in place. So I'm just going to switch it on here. Luckily, everything stayed in place when I was doing the die cutting and I was very careful taking the dies off. Okay, 
This also means that I've got mostly the pieces to create three cards, okay? So I cut out multiples because I'll be able to use the other pieces. Well, I'll need more of the white, but I'll be able to do, let's just say, two cards because I can have them basically um, opposite images of each other for the red and the green. But you can do as many as you want, meaning once you die cut everything out, this is really good for mass production. So I am going to put some glue on the back of my little beards. And this is going to be kind of the starting point so that I'm going to try not to go over the lines. That's something I'm really bad about. Okay. But this will be a starting point to know exactly where everything else is supposed to fit together because all of the little pieces fit perfect because it's all cut out from one die, right? Okay, so to make sure that I'm able to get everything in the right place, I'm going to first take off this outside layer. That basically the part where everything is cut out of. I'm just going to leave the pieces that I need for my gnome tree, okay? I'm just taking off the background. This is going to be kind of like being able to position a large die onto a large background and we want to have that little bit of white space around it. So taking that off first is going to be a big help. Now I can add some adhesive to the back of my little beards and then when I place it in place and burnish it down, should have them all lined up exactly where I need them. So now I'm going to add my little hats on, start with that bit. So I'm going to have, I want, I know I'm probably overthinking it, but I am wanting it to kind of be matchy matchy. So just looking at this, decided that I want the top and I think I just changed my mind. I think I'm going to do the three, the three corners in red and then the inner triangle in green. That'll probably look okay. So this is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle, except you already know where all the pieces go. Okay, now I'm going to fill in with some of the green. So now that we have all of our little clothes on our little gnomes, which is cute, I'm going to add their little noses. Now this die here cuts out some ovals, cuts out six of them because we have six, nose, uh, six gnomes. So I went ahead and I cut out, I think like three or four sets because I knew I would be able to make more cards. And I'm just gonna add their little noses on over the little beards using my jewel picker. And now he's starting to look like a little gnome. These are just so cute. Okay, so now they do look like little gnomes, but you know what? Our little gnomes, they need some shoes. So we have a die over here 
that cuts out all their little shoes and I only need six of them because this is going to go across the one at the bottom but of course like I mentioned I'm cutting out extras all because I want to be able to make additional and I've got my part pieces already ready to go. Okay, so our little gnomies, now they have their shoes. And then the next, I am moving things out of the way as I use them so I don't get mixed up. So this piece cuts out their arms and their little hands. And I figure it's going to match their clothes. And how about if we have them having the opposite color gloves? So that would be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and put down the arms for a couple of these little guys. And now that I think about it, I'm thinking the arm probably should have gone behind his beard. So you know what? I'm going to trim off part of the end so that it is going to fit a little bit better. Let's see, do I have enough cut off? Need a little bit more and a little bit more of an angle. And that should fit about right. And I'm going to say that that is close enough. So I've got two, four more arms to add. So I need two of the green and I may not have enough of the colors. I really don't know. There we go. And now I can add some gloves. Now I only have two of the red and two of the green, oh, four of the red and two of the green. So I'm going to give my little guys in the middle here some red gloves. And the one at the top, I'll give some green. And I think the ones at the bottom, I'm not going to worry about. Okay, I lied. I decided that because of the way that the um, the garland is done, I do need a couple more arms. So I went ahead and cut out an additional red because I need his other arm and then an additional green because I need his other arm. And I'm gonna go ahead and add those two down. So let me go ahead and trim this off. Again, I think this is probably where putting the beards on last would have worked a little bit better because you could tuck the, you could always put the beards on top and that would be perfect. But I think that will work good for this arm. And then I need one for his, for my little red gnome's left arm. Do another little trim. So this is just another example of how if you mess up, it's not rocket surgery. You can always fix it. Okay, let's put their little gloves on to keep their hands nice and toasty. And it does look like I am short by one green glove, but that's okay. There we go. So now our tree is pretty much all put together. Now we get to start decorating it. So this, these dies here create our little garland. It's got the little circles so that you can add little balls on. And then we've got another die that cuts out all of those. And I've cut those out of some red and gold glitter cardstock. And I know I cut out a lot more than I probably need for this one card. Should be enough for all of the, all, all, <clears throat> excuse me, should be enough for all three cards, but you never know. So I'm going to go ahead and add my little garlands on. And then I can add the little balls onto them.
And I'll be honest, I don't remember how many of each color I add, I did on here, but I am going to try to do them alternating. So hopefully that will help enough. If not, you know what? I can always go back and cut out some more little fur balls. To me, these little glitter pieces, to me, they look like those little fuzzy, fuzzy ornaments that we used to have as kids. Okay, let me see how many more red do I have, because I kind of need to have at least two. I do have two. Awesome. Oh, that is looking super cute. We also have a couple of dies that cut out some stars. So let's start off. Star, start off. Let's start off with putting a big star up at the top. And this one has a little corner cut off. I'd rather use a full one for the topper. I'll add it to the top of my gnome up here. And then some of the smaller ones, I think I'm going to use those just in random places. I think I want one here on his little hat. So it kind of looks like where the little ball would be on the end. And I probably cut out um, more, many more than what I actually needed, but you can always use more stars on your cards, right? I think what I want to do is I want this guy down here to be holding one of the larger stars. Like, yeah, I was hoping to decorate, but, you know, they kind of roped me into just standing here. So that, I think, looks <laughs> that looks pretty cute. There's also a little wreath in this set, and I haven't decided if I'm going to be using it on this card or just on a different card, but I did go ahead and cut that one out as well. So now we've got basically the embellishments for two of our cards. I am going to be doing another card or two using the Joyful Words stamp set. This thing is super awesome. And and the Twilight Sparkle strip, um, that glimmer, you know I gotta play with my glimmer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put all of this stuff kind of away and break out my glimmer system so I can play with this um, glimmer die. For my backgrounds, I'm not 100% sure what I wanna use. I do think I wanna use some pattern paper because I need to use up some of my pattern paper. So what I've got out here is this is part of a paper pack that I got from Yes, Scrapbook Customs. Anyway, it was a freebie pack that they had sent out in a, an order I got a couple of months ago or anyway. Um, so I've still got some of those papers left. Um, I've got the new Santa Lane paper pack that was in the Santa Lane card kit, limited edition. So super awesome. Tons of stuff to work with in there. And then I started going through some of my paper packs from my stash and cutting down some 12 by 12s. What I've done with my 12 by 12s is I've cut them down into six by four and get a bunch of panels out. Now this is a, a non-traditional color scheme. There are a bunch of pinks in here, but I'm thinking that this, this furry background may work behind either of these. So that is one of the thoughts on my mind. I'm also wanting to try out doing some glimmering over some of the pages and or stamping because one of the reasons I don't use my pattern paper is there are pages that I really, really have a hard time using because they're just too darn big, the images are. Since this was fighting with me, I think I know what it is. This is one of the first rolls that I've had, and I've had this in my stash for a while, rolled up tight, and it's one of the thinner, um, smaller rolls. Most of the newer rolls, when you buy them directly, are gonna come in these larger rolls, which explains why they use such a large roll in the middle. It helps to keep it a little bit flatter. Okay, so I've taped it down to both ends. I marked on the back where those ends are so I know exactly where the foil is. And this one's off by just a little bit, which is good because I wanted it to be a little further in anyway. Let me just double check. You can look through it, look through, look at the light through it to see exactly where it's lining up. Okay, but that's going to tell me where my foil is so that I can try to line up my glimmer plate with the same spot. 
Okay, I'm going to have to move it over just a little bit more. Let's see. Okay, I'll do that. It would have been better for me to just use my panel that I'm wanting to foil and position it where I want it and figure out exactly where do I need my hot foil plate on there. So if I put it right here, do not move. <laughs> if I put it right there, this should go pretty much perfect where I want it. If it's a little bit off, that's okay too because I could still have got some room to be able to trim it off. Set the timer. Okay, let's see how that did. Crossing my fingers. Okay, it does look like I got good impression, which is awesome. But now, moment of truth is taking off the foil and seeing how that looked over this text background. Oh, I love that. That looks really nice. Okay, so while I was, you know, moving things around um, and trying to figure out which which background I wanted to use with this, um, one of uh, one of my darker panels, one of my darker Christmas panels um, backgrounds, just came to my attention. This one is black with white text, and I thought, I wonder, I wonder how those gold stars would look on it. So I had to give it a try. So let's take a look. Uh -huh. that is gorgeous so I now have a new trick to use up some of my background panels or my background um, pattern paper packs that I don't really like all that much adding a little bit of foil in different places can give them an entirely different look and I love that this is just I mean I've got a few of these I've got a few of the um, basically the border ones and I think that that is going to revitalize a lot of my pattern papers so that I can start using them on some cards so you guys are going to see some of that coming up before too long you're going to see more of where I'm using my background panels and using some foil but I'm going to do other things too because I have not been big on stamping over all of this loveliness you know they are just so pretty I decided I'm going to use um one of my little panels that I cut out of some pattern paper this looks kind of like it reminds me of the rugs that we had when I was a kid. Uh, my mom would have um, like ram skin or something. And it reminds me of those. You know, just a big skin that we had kind of as a rug. Anyway, um, what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to stamp it in some Delicata Gold and then go over that with my Recollections Gold Embossing Powder. Now, one reason why I like using the same color of, um, of ink as my embossing powder when I'm doing a color and embossing powder is because that way, if it doesn't cover all the way, if I don't get really good extra good coverage with my embossing powder, I can at least still have good embossing. And since um, embossing powder is so staticky, I have already gone over my panel with an anti-powder, anti-static powder tool. And this is a brand new stamp, so I don't know how much, how many times I'm going to have to stamp it. I also haven't used this Delicata ink very often. But, you know, gold and silver ink are perfect for the holidays, so that is kind of one of the reasons I got this. Okay, so you can see it on there a little bit. does need quite a bit more ink, though. And this would probably pop a bit more if it was on a darker cardstock. Or a darker background. Okay, starting to pop a little bit more. I think another coat or two and then I will heat emboss it.
That is pretty, 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 pretty. <laughs> um, I think you could actually leave it kind of as is instead of having to add that extra embossing powder. But since I've got my embossing stuff out anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do that too. And although this is a pigment ink, I believe, let me just double check. Yes, this is a pigment ink, but I think it does dry a little bit quicker than um, some of the other pigment inks that I've had. But I do like the color on it. So let me go ahead and add my gold embossing powder. Pretty much emptying the bottle in there because that is a large image. I want to make sure all of it gets pretty well covered. Okay, that looks really good. And this is a big image and I do not want to burn myself. So I am holding onto it with a clip. And let's get the rest of the stuff out of the way. And let's see how this looks. I think I'm gonna also heat it from the bottom to start. So I don't lose any of that embossing powder. Give it a start here. Oh yeah, I'm liking that. Wow. Wow, I love how that one turned out. Oh my gosh. Goodness. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I decided I'm going to use that second sentiment from that stamp set and emboss it the same way that I did the other, but this time I'm going to do it on some red cardstock. I love it. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do another and then I can wipe the powder off of those so that they're ready to be used. So now, finally, I'm gonna start putting these together. I went ahead and trimmed off a couple of little quarter inch-ish, okay, more than quarter inch strips from this panel and I'm gonna use that kind of to look like a little bit of a background because I think the white by itself is just a little bit too much white. So I'm going to just add a little thin line of glue along the edge here. And then add this. And I do kind of want the words to be facing up. So I've got my words here. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm doing this right, guys. Okay, so if I turn it that way and turn it this way, that'll be good, perfect. And I'm just not really making sure that it's completely straight, but trying to keep it pretty straight. And then just adding that on. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I did trim this four inch wide panel down a little bit just to make it so that it was going to fit a little bit better on there with this little extra um, pop of red on the sides. So first is just trim it off at the bottom because I know that that is the edge that I want to keep straight. So just trim off the excess. Then I can turn it this way. And then if I trim this off, let's see, it is right at... I actually did pretty good. This is less than four and a quarter. So I'm gonna trim off just a little bit and that should make that line much more straight. Let's just put it that way. And then turn it and then I can get another 90 degree angle on this end. Okay, and then do the same thing over here. So that's gonna make it so I have this little pop of red on the outside. Okay, so that 
cart is finished up. Okay, so for this first one, I want there to be more of the pink than the red, because I've already got quite a bit of red in the card itself. So I just cut that down to about one and an eighth, I think. One and two eighths, something like that. Anyway, it's um, a little bit less than half of what I had left over from that panel. I'm just adding that to the edge there. Uh, that's going to be cute. Awesome. Next, I'm going to make sure that this is the right size that I want. So right now it is four inches and I need to trim a little bit off the top and a little bit off the bottom because this needs to be right at five and a half. Actually, right at five and a quarter. There we go. And that leaves that little eighth of an inch all the way around. And although they're gnomes, you could say they're elves. It kind of looks like a little elf tree too, because you know, gnomes, elves, I think they are pretty closely related, right? Okay, line that up in the center. And then I'm going to add this sentiment. No, I'm not. I'm going to leave it as is. I was going to add this sentiment, but I don't really want to cover up any of the gnomes. So that's going to finish up the second card. So this is going to be at five and a quarter. So perfect size for the front of my card base. So this one I'm going to adhere down flat, just like I did the last one. Because all the dimension is going to come from my little gnome. And I want my sparkles to the left. Okay, and then to add him, this is so easy. To add him, now that everything is put together with my little gnome, all I have to do is take that little bit of foam off the back of that. Actually, before I do that, I'm also going to add a little bit more foam to the back of my, my bow. Why? Because I want it to be pretty much level. And this is something you don't actually have to do, but I highly recommend it. And then just take off all the release paper. Okay, and I think I want him right about there. That looks pretty good, right? Looks like a good positioning. And then I just need to make sure that the circle goes around this center. Center um, foam dot. So I want my bow to be about there. That looks good. And now he swings. He is a little bit low. I, have, uh, I, th I'm, I think I want to move him up a little bit if it's not, yep, it's not pressed down too firmly yet. That, that will work. It's just a little bit too low there. Also going to move my little foam dots up a little bit so that he can swing a little bit more freely. So line him up where you want him and then press my little bow in place. And now he can swing. That is too cute. And he has his own sentiment there so I don't need to add an additional one. So that's going to finish up this video for the Gnome for Christmas collection from Spellbinders. You guys have a wonderful day. Check out one of these playlists to see some more projects where I'm using Spellbinders products. And remember, if I can make it, you can too. Talk to you soon.